the topic that we'll be talking about today is uh, radiation initially we've talked about the two main uh, modes of heat transfer that are convection and uh, conduction now we'll be talking about radiation one of the main things that before getting into the main uh, definition and the applications of radiation and how we can observe it in our daily lives it's important to first make it clear that there are very clear differences in the way heat is transferred in radiation than how it does in conduction and in convection so the main basic principle is that um, there is no involvement of any medium when we're talking about radiation and uh, We'll get into the details of it later. So radiation is the third way in which heat can travel, but whereas conduction and convection both need matter to be present, radiation can only occur in vacuum. Vacuum basically refers to um, absence of any material when there are no particles or no molecules involved. So particles of matter are not involved. As I said earlier, we do not require a medium to uh, transfer the heat as in convection uh, wait let me draw a diagram so we, if we're talking about convection uh, in this room the, what happens is that air is uh, basically carrying these convecting uh, convective currents and that is how heat is being transferred however if we talk about uh, this is an example of a room and we're talking about convection however if we talk about conduction uh, there is no movement of the material of the me or the medium itself however the way it transfers is that it transfers through the medium so if this was a rod he transfers from a region of high temperature to a region of lower temperature so in this case the the way material is uh, is involved is that um, it travels through the material and in the first example of convection the way material is involved is that it transfers by the material itself however when we talk about radiation there is no involvement of material or the matter itself so radiation is a way of heat transfer that does not require any matter or material to carry it and it occurs in vacuum so uh, one of the main examples of radiation or a uh, mode of heat transfer through radiation is from uh, sun the way it reaches us from the sun so as it is written over here radiation is the way he transfers uh, from uh, the sun to the earth's surface so as you can see there aren't any particles involved from the space or from the sun itself because there is space is vacuum but it does reach us through these radiation so how does radiation basically happen what is the main thing that carries radiation or what is the sort of energy that radiation uh, basically you know uh, processes through so radiation has all the properties of electromagnetic waves so if even if this is confusing of what exactly electromagnetic waves are we are going to get to that after later uh, in this slideshow but the thing that is mostly concerning is the word waves so we do not require material we do not require particles because we are dealing with waves such that it travels at the speed of radio waves and gives interference effects so uh, we can also say radio waves that's because uh, radio waves we know how um, telecommunications you know basically take place it's it's again through electromagnetic waves but over here even if radio waves is confusing it's easier to even think about light so it travels at the speed of light and gives interference effects. Uh, by interference effects, this means that when it falls on an object, it is partly reflected, partly transmitted, and partly absorbed. The absorbed part raises the temperature of an object. So I'm going to draw this. Yeah. So if you have, let's just say, a remote source, of electromagnetic rays or any kind of radiation this is a source this is a very um, concentrated source so it's giving out these radiations these electromagnetic radiations let's just say they are infrared rays and it hits this surface now when it hits the surface these are waves but it's 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 kind of convenient to draw them in form of a ray 
which is not a wave exactly but it's it's like we show the propagation of the wave so propagation of wave is in this direction when it gets reflected it's gonna get it's gonna reflect back in this direction some of it is going to be transmitted which will be in this direction but again it will be in the forms of waves this this arrow just shows the direction and some of it will be absorbed in this lining or in itself so the thing that basically concerns us is this part which hits the the point or the uh, object that is of our concern that when we don't we don't care about the transmission in this uh, chapter or from this perspective we don't care about the reflection however we do care about the absorption so when a body absorbs some radiation it generally uh, has different effects on it and one of them is that it tem its temperature rises so that's how heat is being transferred through the mode of radiation now we get to the formal definition of radiation uh, and that's how we define it that radiation is a flow of heat from one place to another by means of electromagnetic waves radiation is emitted by all bodies above absolute zero and consists more mostly of infrared radiation but also light and ultraviolet are also present if the body is very hot so uh, mostly it can the radiation uh, through which heat is transferred we mostly talk about infrared radiation but since it's a whole less, uh, it's a whole spectrum uh, which has different forms of intra, uh, ultra, electromagnetic wave sorry so that includes light ultraviolet ray, uh, waves radio waves and other gamma rays etc but they are only present in some certain circumstances it's uh, kind of convenient to just refer to them or just uh, confine ourselves to talk about the infrared radiations for now because they basically are involved in heating the uh, raising the temperature and heating something up so now as we've seen that three things can happen when uh, some waves or some rays hit a surface it gets reflected it gets transmitted and it gets absorbed the main concern or the area of concern is absorption. So we are going to talk about absorbers of how different surfaces can be good absorbers or bad absorbers, bad emitters, and how does that affect the rate of radiation. So some surfaces absorb radiation better than the others as may be shown in the apparatus and figure. So now how this is shown in this figure is that we have this radiator or heater as we have in our homes generally for central heating. So this is a heater it's a circular heater and it has two um, surfaces that are attached. This one right here on the left side is a shiny surface. It is polished with some shiny paint and the other one is a dull matte black surface. Now we have to really observe of what, um, which kind of surface will is going to be a better absorber. Now how, is, how are we going to basically uh, experiment that? What is going to happen is that there is candle wax, which means that this candle wax needs some heating in order to get melted. And when it melts, the coin that is attached to it on top, it will fall down. The candle wax is, will only melt when it when some specific amount of heat is transferred to it, and that heat will only get transferred if this shiny surface or this black dull surface, whichever surface is a better absorber, absorbs that heat that is transmitted by the electrical heater. So the inside of a surface of one lid is shiny and of the other one is dull black. The coins are stuck on the outside of each lid with candle wax. If heater is midway between the lids, they each receive the same amount of radiation. After a few minutes, the wax on black lid melts and coin falls off. Now, the reason why the coin falls off of the black lid or the black surface definitely tells us that black dull matte surfaces are better absorbers than shiny surfaces so the shiny lid stays cool and the wax unmelted the reason uh, why the shiny lid stays cool is that uh, we have to basically think about the proportion of um, if you think about it one way uh, it's this way it's easier to basically understand what's happening so the incident rays let's just say you 
there is a source of electromagnetic radiation that is incident on a plane or on a surface so some energy or some electromagnetic radiation is incident on a surface now there are two things that can basically happen to it number one that it can get uh, reflected back sorry three things it can get transmitted T-R-A-N-S-M transmitted I guess that'll do and the, third, uh, and the third thing is that it can get absorbed now we're not going to talk about the uh, transmission as of now because we're going to discuss this later on absorption so yeah but what happens is that when an object or when a surface is dull black and matte so most of it is absorbed very less amount of the incident heat is transmitted however in the other case when a surface is shiny a very minimal amount is basically absorbed and most of it gets reflected back so that is why the candle wax over here doesn't get melted as the shiny surface basically does not heat up it, it reflects all the surface and um, and that is why it uh, doesn't get hot so emitters why why do we have to think about emitters so we have concluded that dull black surfaces are basically the best absorbers but it's also true that dull black surfaces are better absorbers than white shiny surfaces and it's also true that dull black surfaces are better emitter of radiation than the shiny one the cooling fins on the heat exchanger at the back of a refrigerator are painted black so they lose heat more quickly. By contrast, saucepans that are polished are poor emitters and they keep heat longer. So these are the reasons why we have different applications that something is polished uh, shinier and some things are polished uh, black and dull matte because of these properties that some of them are good emitters, some of them are good absorbers and and are they are good reflectors so we have to basically play with these uh, qualities and then uh, select the best material mm. hot copper sheet with one side polished and the other blackened uh, to wait a second shown here is another example of a demonstration or an ex uh, or an experiment that can take place in order to basically find out uh, initially we had observed absorption now we can observe transmission or emission uh, emission of the heat or the radiation so it's, it's a fairly simple experiment that you can basically perform in your house too so there are two copper sheets one side is polished and other side is blackened and they are initially um, heated or they're put in the same temperature whatever that is now you put hands uh, at some diff distance at the back of the both sheets and you observe that the side that is blackened um, that hand feels more warm that is only because uh, blackened sides or the dark matte sides are better uh, emitters than the shinier ones so it's it's, it's a fairly simple experiment now uh, rate of a cooling a rate of cooling of an object now rate of cooling of an object basically depends on uh, some factors that we're going to discuss so the rate at which an object cools, at which its temperature falls can be shown to be proportional to the ratio of its surface area that is a to its volume so for the cube of side l let's just say this the 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 ratio is this however if we take sides 2l then the ratio becomes this so that is basically half the ratio which tells us that the larger cube has smaller a by v ratio and so it cools more slowly so uh, larger this ratio rapid cooling of the uh, object so that basically tells us that if area is more to response to the volume then that means that an object will cool more and if you think about it um, that basically means that if an object has larger surface area that is exposed to the environment obviously it will cool more so if you think practically um, then that is how you view it but 
mathematically, this is basically the proof that larger the A by V ratio, area to volume ratio, faster or a rapid cooling it will have. So you could also investigate this using two aluminum cubes, having uh, one having twice the length of the other one. Each one needs hole for a thermometer and an electrical heater to raise the temp to the same, same starting temperature so that we are basically observing or experimenting them on the same ground. Graphs of temperature against time for both blocks can then be obtained. It is really important that the blocks are at the same starting temperature because the higher temperature uh, the body is above its surroundings because the temperature radiant uh, from the surrounding really matters and it can fairly change the results or the conclusion that we can lead to. So the greater amount of radiation it emits per second, the faster it cools. This can be seen from the cooling curves in the, since the gradient of the graph is steeper at higher temperatures than it is at lower temperatures. We've seen it already in the cooling curve that uh, at higher temperatures it is steeper than at lower temperatures, which is over here. So, so, so we don't really want that affecting our uh, experiments. So that concludes us to say that the hotter the body, the more infrared, ra infrared radiation it radiates in a given time. So hotter means more radiation in a specific amount of time. The rate at which an object transfers energy by heating depends on surface area, as we have seen, which is area to volume ratio. And as we're talking about volume, obviously volume is also another factor. The material of an object, if it is wood or if it is, uh, let's, just, let's just say a metal, obviously it will have different properties uh, and it will affect the uh, kind of radiation or the time it will take for it to radiate a specific amount of heat. So material is also a, a very important aspect or a very important factor in this. And the last one, which is really important and we've experimented a lot about, is the nature of surface. Either it is black, matte, what color is it? It is shiny or not? So these things really affect the uh, radiation process. That is it about the radiation. We have talked about the experiments of how an object can be a good emitter, absorber, or reflector, and how we've talked about some of the um, applications. In the next topic, we will talk about the applications of the three modes of transfer.